Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we'll just wait for a few more seconds for everyone to come in for today's informative interactive webinar that we have um, set for you for today in what your lenders need you to know. My name is Jesus Padilla, the Assistant Director here at the Florida SBDC at FIU, along with my colleague, Jose Monte. He is the Access to Capital Consultant um, under the program BizGap. This is a good opportunity for you to introduce yourself, what type of business you have, what type of industry, um, and this is a good opportunity for you to ask questions um, as Jose, as being a former banker, former lender, um, he could give you some insights, some information in um, some of the common questions that, um, that he has received throughout his banking experience. So right there, he'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Just general housekeeping items. This is a recorded webinar. So in case if you have to step out, answer a phone call, don't worry. All participants will be receiving today's presentation along with the recording. Um, so definitely encourage you to like and subscribe our YouTube channel as well. Um, strongly encourage you to put your questions in the Q&A. So like that, uh, either Jose or I will be more happy to moderate those questions for you. So Jose, do you want to introduce yourself um, from your experience as a, as a former lender, former banker? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I was a, a, a commercial a uh, banker here in South Florida for, for 30 years. Um, during that time, I handled small business lending, corporate lending, commercial lending, and commercial real estate. And I guess our hopes is to give you some insight and some information and um, help you with the expectations of what your lender um, is looking for for that initial meeting regarding a, uh, a small business loan. Thank you, Jose. So a brief description who we are, what we do. Um, we are the 2023 National SBDC of the Year, as uh, we have uh, specialized business consultants in the realm of access to capital, marketing, operations, and strategy, all the different faucets of what a small business entails. We have a specialized business consultant to assist with the business needs. Yep, I see a lot of uh, friendly faces. And uh, thank you for coming to today's webinar. So um, we are a resource partner of the U.S. Small Business Administration that provides the one-to-one -one business consulting, training, and information of small businesses that are located here in Miami-Dade and Monroe County. Since 2014, we have worked with close to 8,000 small businesses that has resulted over, over 119,000 hours of consulting. But one of the caveat is that we have we're slowly approaching close to half a billion dollars in capital access. If it's through grants, um, 504 loans, 7A loans, equity funding, all the different faucets of obtaining capital, our team has been one of the, um, the strongholds in, in regards of today's um, presentation and assisting the small businesses in firm capital. What is BizCap? Um, this is where Jose is part of the separate project is an initiative that the Florida SBDC at FIU has run since 2016. It provides the hyper-local consulting, training, and outreach to you, the small business owners, in targeted communities and commercial corridors. Think of this as an additional tool in your toolkit for businesses that are looking to start their business, to grow their business, and also to create new strategies to implement the goals that they have set forth for the year. BizCap has seen some of the outcomes through the partnerships through multiple communities along um, in Miami-Dade County. Over 300 small businesses have attended or received consulting um, in those um, communities. And over 300 businesses, we have gone canvassing, gone door-to-door, -door, what are some of the pain points, some introductions, some resources that they're seeking. Um, we have been able to provide them the information for them to grow. If you have any questions, um, please put them in the Q&A. Um, so that I'll be more than happy to answer those questions for you. Here are some additional previous um, photos from the past projects. On the top left-hand corner, we worked with a Miami, um, Miami Downtown Development Authority um, with the city of North Miami Beach over, over in Wynwood during the Zika virus was in effect. So we have provided the the toolkits, the tools and resources to work with the affected targeted commercial corridors to assist with their business needs. 
The BizCap project in Florida Congressional District 27 is funded by a grant through the U.S. Small Business Administration. The Florida's 27th Congressional District, it covers city of Miami, Key Biscayne, Coal Gables, and runs through Kendall down to Color Bay. Since the 2019 census, over 86,000 small businesses are located in Congressional District 27. What are the goals? The three core activities, it is the training, the outreach, the door-to-door -door canvassing, the one-on-one -on -one business consulting, followed by the data mapping, the surveys of the small businesses located in District 27. Our goal is to work with you in this calendar year, um, the goal of working with a thousand small businesses through consulting and trainings as such you're here present today. So once again, my name is Jesus Padilla. I'm the Assistant Director here at the Florida SBDCFIU, along with Jose Monte, Business Consultant in the realm of Access Capital. In today's presentation, what your lenders need you to know. So it's gonna be more of a conversation um, in regards to some of the slides and also from Jose's experience, but definitely I encourage you to ask questions. Um, knowledge is power, but definitely it's giving you the tools for you to ask those questions. You already have the homework um, along with the answers while you're working with your lenders based on the amount of capital you're seeking, what you need, don't need, um, so that you're successfully to obtain the necessary funds for your business growth. So this is a good opportunity for you to have a good understanding who is in your team. If it's any CPAs, accountants, um, bankers, insurance agents, vendors, financial advisors, um, these are the ones who are able to be pretty much like your board directors, your key advisors to make sure that you're making those strategic financial decisions are, are positive and have a, a fair boat return investment. But uh, Jose, from your experience working with small businesses, um, are there any other potential team members that could be part of the um, the small businesses in, in, in their teams? You're mute. You're mute. And then mute. I'm sorry, it was on mute. Um, you know, depending on the size of your business and the certain um, stage of where your business is at is how your CPA attorney you know, your advisors, uh, their involvement in your small business. Um, other key roles could be if you're, if you're a smaller role, you may just have a book, just a bookkeeper. You may have an in-house accountant, um, not necessarily a, a CPA um, on staff or on retainer that you're using, but just, uh, you know, you could have a bookkeeper. It could be, a, you know, your, your head of sales. So these, these are different key roles that, um, that are important, um, especially when you're talking about a uh, you know, you're, when you're thinking about a small business loan or approaching a, a, a lender, because um, these are these are the key roles that obviously know the sales that are coming in. Um, they know the books that are they're handling your books for you. you may be great at, at selling your product and marketing, but your bookkeeper is the one that knows the numbers and manages the day to day of the money coming in, the money going out. So there's other roles that are, that are as important. Um, um, and again, they're, they mirror the CPA and attorney and, and, and advisor but they may be in a smaller role in-house uh, depending on the size of your business. And this is where to start having a good understanding of the five C's of credit. Uh, we're gonna go over a um, bit in depth of the five C's, but then at the same time, this is where we would start focusing on the, the existing liabilities, the debts, the any collateral to secure the loans. So right there, it, it stands out based on how much funds you're seeking. Um, for your business. So the character, it describes who you are, um, how have you handled previous debt obligations, and what have you done in the past that makes you qualify to start a business. And this talks about the credit score, the reputation, and the experience. Um, Jose, um, are there like any other variables that might affect or improve one's uh, credit um, um, in regards to the character? I mean, you know, these these kind of factors kind of stand for themselves. Um, obviously, when you've got a small business, um, depending and you haven't borrowed in the past, there is really not what you call a business credit history because you don't have it. So what what a lender looks at is obviously what is the 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 experience in the business, the reputation, and the credit score of the management of the business. It's usually a if it's a mom and pop. It's usually the one owner or the or the owner and partner, the husband and wife. So obviously, it's very important that you manage your, your personal credit score, even though maybe even though maybe separate from the business. You know, lenders look at the credit score 
of the management as a mirror of how perhaps the credit of the business will be run. So if you have satisfactory and good credit score individually, they'll tend to think that the business will be run in the same fashion. If you've got very poor credit score, um, then obviously it's a um, it's a mirror in, you know, in the opposite direction that the business probably will not be handled in a very, very responsible, organized fashion. However, something to keep in mind, different lenders have different credit score criteria. Um, traditional lenders like banks, it, they're very credit score oriented, black and white, uh, very automated process. It's a credit score end of story, and that's a, it's a big factor. But not traditional lenders, um, they have much lower credit score tier requirements. They're more focused on the business, the business revenue and the business profits. Um, and again, they're geared to help small businesses, so they're more lenient and flexible than a traditional bank. They still have credit score requirements, but they're they're much, much lower than traditional banks. So just something to keep in mind. Thank you, Jose. Then with the capacity is the ability to repay the debt, if it's the debt to income ratio, the debt service ratio, or other parties, the debt service coverage, any other sources of income and the rental income. Um, Jose, from your experience, in the capacity route, sometimes um, they don't have the, the ability to repay. Are there like any other situations that they could increase their capacity as well? Well, the, the capacity to pay is, is I mean, it's, it's, a very, it's a very simple concept. I mean, you've got revenue coming in, expenses going out, and what's left over is your profit, your cash flow. Um, you've got to have, you've got to have positive cash flow um, to repay a loan. Um, if you don't have it, that makes things very tough. Um, how do you increase your cash flow, your, your profit? So, I mean, very simple things. The, you increase the bottom line by, by twofold, either increasing the revenues, what's coming in, and decreasing the expenses of what's going out. Um, sometimes that can be done. You, you can cut expenses, keep an eye on expenses on what they are, um, and, and try to increase revenues. It's very simple, but it's, it's harder to be done in practice, but it's a very simple concept. You've got to have more money coming in than what you have going out in expenses. Um, if the repayment capacity is not there, then it's very challenging to get a, a, a small business loan. However, if you're in a break-even scenario um, in a new company, but you're growing, you've shown a loss, a smaller loss, now you're breaking even. Um, sometimes, with these non-traditional lenders, if you do, if you have projections that will continue the same pattern, maybe next year you're showing profit. So obviously, uh, again, we're talking about smaller business type loans, but that could be a, a, a scenario if everything is trending in the right direction. And even with a small profit, but everything is keeps growing, revenues are growing, uh, losses keep growing gradually. So projections can help you in a in, in a small business loan, assuming that, that the that, that the business continues in the same trend and next year you have higher income and higher sales. So it, it um but again raymond capacity is number one. It's very simple. Lenders um or have to analyze how is the loan getting repaid. So uh, uh, you know debt debt service uh, uh, uh coverage is key. It's number number one. And then um I have one question for you. Is it recommended to develop business credit prior to applying for lending for your business? Well, well, the the only way you develop business credit, uh, you know, let's give you an example. You have a small business you just started. Um, you know, what what develops business credit? You, you have you have to take on some debt. Now, that debt doesn't necessarily have to be from a lender. It could be from your vendor. Maybe the vendor who's selling you the product, your raw materials that you you're making shoes or if you're providing services. If you have, if you're getting, if you're getting a, a, you have debt in a different way, not from a lender, it could be from a vendor. Um, obviously, that that you know that can can help you when you're approaching a small business lending. But again, the key factors there is that you've got to have revenue. There's not tra traditional banks like the traditional lenders. Um, most of them want to see you in business two to three years. Not traditional lenders, the 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 CDFIs, the community based lending organizations, that are geared specifically to help small businesses because they're underserved and they can't go to a bank. Again, those have lower lower tier credit credit issues. Um, they have the more flexible, and and some of them they don't care if you've been in business for three months, six months, but they want to see you've got revenues. So how do they do that? You can't give them a tax return. The last for your business bank statements. Show me that hey, you've you've got a good idea, a good product, 
I don't care that you, you opened it up three months ago, but show me that you've got revenues and you're you're on the right track and they can help you with a small business loan because you do have you do have the capacity to repay. You just haven't been in business for a year or two and have the, the documented tax returns, but you do have business bank statements that are uh, as very as key when it's a small business. And with the capital, if you have any um, down payments, the loan to value, um, the equity in the project, along with the skin in the game. And then, uh, Jose, which is a good amount for like a down payment for to acquire some capital? Is it like 20 percent, like buying a house? Is it 5 percent? Um, yeah, it, 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 and it depends. I mean, obviously, your, your most lenient, your most liberal down payment requirements are tied to SBA loan type products. Um, let's say you're buying a commercial warehouse, a condo warehouse to put your small business, a storefront. Um, the SBA, if it's if it's a if it's a real estate property, the SBA um, has a, a minimum ten percent, which is the most liberal you're going to find in the marketplace. You walk into a traditional lender, traditional bank, and they're going to want anywhere from twenty five to thirty five percent upfront down payment. Plus, you then have to have the capital to sustain the business. So you can't put every dollar to buy the property. They want to see money after the purchase. So it gives you an idea. The SBA. Um, on a property, 10% is the absolute minimum. If it's a, uh, a business type transaction, if you're buying a business, um, if you're investing in equipment um, and what have you, um, there's, there's the SBA 7A program, other programs that are not tied to real estate per se. Um, and those usually want 20% of, of 20 down payment or 20% offset of whatever the total, the total uh, capital required is for that equipment, for that purchase, for the business, for what have you. And again, that's not tied to a specific, you know, brick and mortar property. So again, SBA um, the, offers the uh, the most liberal down payment requirements. And then in the regards of the capital, this is where other funding options could come into play, like the personal savings, the family and friends, the angel investors, the venture capitalists, correct? Correct. Okay. And then um, are there um, different types of financing, like additional loans? Um, obviously, you mentioned the, the 504, the 7A loans, um, equity investments. Um, is there like any other non-traditional route that also could be um, affected and could be applied in this regard? Yeah, if we're talking the, the, the non-traditional routes outside of traditional lending, like banks or the SBA loan products, um, their, their, their loan amounts, um, are smaller. In other words, the SBA, uh, 504 is, you know, five and a half million, five and a half million dollars is the max. Um, the non-traditional lenders don't have those amounts. Um, they're smaller amounts. They have different programs. Um, and those programs tend, can change from quarter to quarter, depending how the funding and how, and how the, how they've raised their capital. Um, but if you're looking for a, you know, for a loan of a hundred thousand, there's non-traditional sources out there um, that can lend you the money as competitive and in some cases uh, probably more competitive than the banks because again they are they are you know they, they're here to serve a need and the need is to help small businesses that are underserved and cannot go to the traditional banks whether it be because of credit whether it be because they have the, the business has not been in, the business has not had activity um, it just started six months ago or a year ago so they don't have documented tax returns financial statements or what have you um, so they're they ask less questions they're more liberal um, but their loan amounts are smaller as they should be you're a, you're, a, you're a small business gaining traction you know trying to take it to the next step um, these are smaller loan amounts where, you, where we're obviously taking them and repaying them we build credit um, so those are you know and again there's many lenders out there they all different. They all have different different requirements, um, but at the end of the day, one thing one thing is in common. You've got to have the sales. You got to have sales coming in to support um, a loan request. It can't be a business that opened up six months ago um, and really hasn't had any activity. It has no sales. You know, then you, you're in a very challenging situation. You may have to go the other routes of bootstrapping, um, uh, angel investor savings, credit cards, friends and families, other routes um, that that you need to approach and consider traditional lending or even the community-based lenders um, may not be an option for you. Now, is there a minimum capital amount required for an 8A contract? I'm sorry, for what, for what kind of contract? For an 8A, government contracting contract. No, that, that, that's, a totally, that's a totally different topic. 
Um, that that depends. That depends on the on the on the, on the whether you're talking the Dade County, the city, uh, state of Florida, federal. Um, that that will that will depend on them. Um, I can tell you from experience that obviously there's you know they they usually any contract any contract that you're uh, bidding on. Um, aside from the bidding due diligence, is they will request um, significant documentation that you have the ability and the capital. Um, to undertake that contract. Now, in other words, you, um, if you're asking, can I get a contract and then go to a bank and say, can I get some, can I get some funding? Um, uh, you you can, but you've got to have, you've got to be in business and have and have some activity. Um, if this is your first contract starting up, lenders are going to say, well, you know, I, I I don't know that you haven't performed any contract yet, so I don't know the likelihood. So they're not going to fund on that contract. Uh, um, and then give you the monies for you then to go ahead and you know and, and submit the bid with Dade County or what have you. So, but but again, that depends on on the con on on the federal agency or community agency. That's that's obviously that's uh, putting the bid out. You, you have discussed with them what the requirements are, and they change. They change. Yeah, and I think they it's um it's the, the, there's like a small correlation between the collateral side, um or on the project's the capacity, in regards to uh, if I'm gonna get like a a $5 million contract and it's just a one person shop. I don't have the human capital. Um, I don't have the capacity to perform that job. Just like the same route that if I don't have the capacity to obtain a $500,000 loan, you know, like think smaller and just grow organically. Um, definitely working with the local government agencies like the county or the city, it's a good track record, good performance. Um, so when the time is right to go for the federal side, yeah, you're ready to go and show your credibility on that regard as well. Yeah, and I've, I've even reviewed a contract for a for a client uh, way back um, who was looking for capital because she they, they bid on a, on a on a project for construction, and the contract when I read it specifically said they had to show the 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 mean. Obviously, the experience of the means was outside of my scope, but they had to show the capital um, to be able to undertake the project. So it wasn't just financing; they wanted to see proof where this money was sitting in bank accounts. For the past three months, that they were not basically going out and leveraging money to build the project. So you know, every every government, every every bid contract is different. You have to read the nuances of what they require. But some of them, um, they want to see they want to see that you have the money in hand already. Not let me go out to the let me, let me get the contract bid. I won the bid. Let me go out now and see if I can get the money for it. You know, that's not how they work. They want to know you have the where, the where how and the, and 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 the capital to start the project once you're, once you're approved immediately not go out and start fishing and see if you can find the money for it. And uh, in, just like off topic, in case if anyone's interested to do business with the county, don't hesitate, uh, shoot me an email. I have uh, great colleagues um, that will be more than happy to intru introduce you, assist you along with the additional resources um, to get yourself ready um, for government contracting ready as well. So just a, a little shameless plug right there for my colleagues uh, from the county. And then um, this is where we talk about the collateral, like any asset that the lender accepts as a security for a loan. It could be the mortgage, it could be the um, the UCC filing, any accounts receivables um, that one has um, to provide additional skin in the game in the um, with the lenders. Okay, and then Jose, um, for you, based on collateral, is there like a certain percentage in regards of the... Uh, Collateral is it like a fifty percent collateral? Is it five percent, ten percent? Is does this also serve like a down payment as well, based on the uh, like the twenty percent for the SBA loan or the ten percent? No, no, yeah, no. This is this is this is this is uh, this is not the same as a down payment. O almost almost as a standard, um, any small business loan, um, you there's typically not tangible collateral. If you've got tangible collateral like a real estate. Um, you actually own your offices, you actually own your building, um, your warehouse, and obviously, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's fantastic. That's a, that's, a, that's a good asset. And for lenders in South Florida in particular, they love real estate. So real estate is a great asset and it helps you sometimes to get over that hump in a, in a, in a loan discussion. Um, but your typical run the mill small business, um, what they're going to provide, again, you, you know, the, the, the lender has done the due diligence, you have the sales, you have the revenue, the profits, you know, they're comfortable with you and you're talking about a loan. Typically what they take is they'll take a, a UCC filing. And, and what that is, is that that's a general blanket lien on the business's accounts receivable, inventory, office equipment, um, any, 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 
any 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 obligations that are any payables that are payable to you to the business um and again they take collateral on that meaning if the business were to default um you know let's say that all of a sudden you're you're selling the Publix, you're selling uh, bananas and all of a sudden the business closes but banana but Publix owes you twenty thousand dollars that lender will step in and say hey Publix, don't pay uh don't pay joe smith you know, pay me the lender because Joe Smith defaulted. So that, that's what the UCC filing does. It, it perfects the lien for the lender where they can step in and say, hey, the business has defaulted. Now the inventory belongs to me. You know, you know, in, in reality, when a business, when a business, when a small business goes under, the UCC really is, you know, from experience is meaningless. It's, you know, it's considered unsecured, um, which is why um, credit score is important and revenues and profits because UCC is taken because that's sort of how the product is handled. But when a, when a, when a small business goes bad, there's really at the end of the day, uh, very few instances where you find any inventory and any receivables, it's all gone. And that's why the business has failed. You know, everything has been liquidated and taken out. So there's not, there's nothing left for the lender. That's why lenders obviously do their due diligence and make sure you know, traditional lenders, you've been in business for three or four years, you've got receivables, you know, and the, the credit, the, the personal credit behind the owner is strong. Um, that tends to give them the, the philosophy that, you know, this, uh, again, you're also going to guarantee the loan. And the reason to get your guarantee is because it's, it's really more, uh, not a collection issue, but more of a philo philosophical hold. Any business owner that guarantees their loan is going to do probably everything under the sun to make sure that loan gets repaid. Because his because his credit score or his credit history or what have you um, can, could be ruined, so that's why you know all all, all small business loans are, are personally guaranteed, um, and your credit score of the owner is important because they, they look they're looking at looking at you, you know the business the business is run by itself it runs because of the owner's management experience because of his of his sales tactics um, so it you know so the owner the ownership and his credit is is paramount in a small business loan discussion when we're talking about traditional lenders like banks. Then with the conditions is how the borrower intends to use the funds, what is the purpose of the loan, what are the interest rates, the term of the loan, the economic conditions. And then, um, Jose, when when there is like the, the misuse of the funds for the intended purpose, um, what are some repercussions um, with that? <clears throat> like if I don't, for example, if I default on an SBA loan, what are some of the repercussions? Or if I file for bankruptcy, you know, what, what are some of the conditions if the borrower does not repay back that loan, yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, you know, we, we live in a country of of credit. If you've got poor credit or no credit, um, you obviously have a much tougher go um, at accessing capital, at accessing anything. I mean, even even leasing a company car is is a problem. So obviously, if you don't pay an SBA loan, obviously, you know, like like any loan you don't pay, you know, they'll go against whatever collateral. If it's UCC one, they'll go against your inventory, equipment, whatever they have personally guaranteed obviously they can go after if you don't have the means to pay you know, they can put a judgment on you um in the event down the road you ever be, you ever come into assets or money um they may, maybe they'll have a chance of collecting down the road in the future and in the meantime obviously your personal credit score um gets ruined which means down the road um you know talking you know pulling into another bank and asking for a loan regardless of a new business new entity new everything um it's all tied to your name so they'll pull it up and and obviously those records last a while. Bankruptcy, you're talking seven years, personal bankruptcy is seven years. Um, it's on there. Um, so it, it 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 hangs out for a long time and it, it can cripple you from a business standpoint. And obviously lenders know that you have those options. So, you know, they try to mitigate uh, that you have good credit score and, and, and a good business um, to sort of uh, project that obviously this business will be around for the next 10 years before they lend. And then, um, obviously, having a good uh, a good credit score definitely it um it works with the interest rates, with uh, with the credibility and the bankability as well. So obviously, the seven hundred seven fifty is a good credit score. But is there like an ideal number or ideal threshold, like the minimum that one could obtain um capital? Yeah, there there again, there's no there's no set number. Um, you know, we're we're living in an era where I think the credit score. Um, obviously, we're coming out of COVID, and there, there's challenges in the in the in the in the, in the economy. Uh, we're, we're in a high interest rate market, um, so you know this 700, 750 good that that can fluctuate. You can have 650 and still be considered good. It depends on the lender. 
Um, traditional lenders like banks, credit unions, the I'm talking the regulated, the regulated lending institutions, they're, they're the ones that focus more on, on the credit score. <clears throat> For example, you have here where it says 560 to 650 is um is bad. Um, we have you have some community-based lending organizations that their minimum requirement is 575. So you're you're in what's called the bad category for a traditional lender, and that's all they require, 575. Um, now that's from the credit standpoint. You still have to have the sales and the ability to repay, you know. So, and again, those lenders you can be in business six months if you've got business bank statements showing the incoming, uh, the incoming revenues to the account. You've got at the end of the month you're not overdrawn. You know, there's positive balances that are that are able to pay a new small business loan. Um, those are options as well. They can help. And again, they and again their credit requirements five seventy five. You know, a, a, a traditional lender won't touch the five seventy five. You know, they're looking they're looking for anything um, six fifty and above, and 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 the credit score affects your rate. Um, you may have great rev great revenue and great profits, and sometimes the score can bring can increase your rate a little bit. It depends on the lender, depends on the bank, um, but sometimes it's used as a tool to increase your rate um, because the credit score. Um, they have sometimes the lender will have a product, and that product is marketed and based um, on a certain credit score. For a certain rate, so they cannot change. If you've if you've got great revenue, you know they'll have to give you a different type of a loan, but not not a publicized loan product because they're they're bound to give you a particular rate based on a particular score. It depends on the loan product and on the lender. Um, again, but the get I guess the, the the takeaway is there's a lot of there's 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 more than one option when it comes to loans, and there's more than one um, credit score requirement other than what the banks have. There's other non traditional lenders that are there to help. Then uh, there's various loan types. I know that um, we, we brushed up a little bit of the different loan types um, throughout the, the five C's, which is the real estate loans, the line of credits, the term loans, the leasehold improvements uh, loans. Um, Jose, are there like any, is there like a common denominator for any of these four that one could definitely already have in the back pocket while presenting it to the respective lenders? Do they need like a business plan or the financial statements for like the last three years? Is it what are some common documents that everyone should have um, ready while presenting it to the lender for these four loan types? Yeah, I I, I think if, if you're talking a traditional lender or a bank, and I'm assuming that you know every small business has a bank because if you've got you need to have business bank you need to have business bank statements and that's tied to a bank. It's not tied to a community organization. Um, so obviously, you know the those those banks are the ones that they're they're going to want to see two to three years of tax returns. On the business and personal. Um, they, aside from that, they may want to see interim uh, an interim P and L, depending on when what what part of the year we're at. Um, they may ask for your your reports on your inventory, depending again what what type of business you have. They may ask for your accounts receivable aging to see if the receivables that, that you're collecting um, from your sales <clears throat> are they current? Um, are, are, are the are, are the are your sales really slow? You're paying, you know, your your you're selling product, but you're getting paid back in 90 days instead of 30 days. So, you know, all these are factors that the bank, traditional banks will ask for. Um, you're not traditional lenders, the, the CDFIs, the fintechs, community-based lending organizations. Um, they like to see if you, you, you can provide your last year's tax return. <clears throat> um, that, is, that is obviously key and your business bank statements. If your business has been around less than a year, then obviously the only thing you've got um, to show them would be a would be a profit and loss, and your business bank statements is probably going to be key. They're going to want to see what your sales coming in for the last three months are. So the last three, the last <clears throat> three months business bank statements to see what your incoming monthly revenue is, and how is the account handled, the expenses going out, and at the end of the month, what is your average monthly balance? Um, and based on that, they can come up with a small business loan. If you've got revenues coming in and expenses going all out at the end of the month, you're overdrawn. That's not going to help either, um, because you know they're viewing it as you've yeah you've got great sales, but the business is, is to a point where you still have way too many expenses and you're not making money. And again, you know you've got to make money to repay a loan. So that's you know th that's key as well. Not just having the sales, you got to have the sales, and you've got to have the expenses in line, and you're making money. And then with the uh, with the SBA loans, 
um, with the commercial um, loan applications. This is where, obviously, what Jose said, the last three years tax returns, the financial statements, the projections, the business planning, the entity documents, the equipment listing. So these are all the documents um, just to have everything organized to present it to the respective lender. And then with a guarantor, um, anyone owning 20% or more of the company, at least provide the, the last three years of tax returns, personal financial statements, along with your resume. And then um, this is a good opportunity for you to brush up or develop your own business plan. Um, in the chat, just you know, give me a thumbs up or raise your hand. Um, if you have already developed a business plan or need assistance in developing a business plan, so we could definitely provide you additional tools and resources for you to develop a business plan. Or even if you've already done one, how is that experience like? Perfect, okay. Perfect, yeah. And um, and then in the business plan, this is where you'll be um, talking about the executive summary, the who are the key personnel, what are the operating procedures, how is the industry, is it growing, is it decreasing, um, followed by the, the competition analysis. Who is your customers? What products or services you're providing? And what are the, the marketing strategies for the plans to obtain and retain your ideal customers? This provides the what's your value proposition? Um, what are the additional services and how you're able to expand the business to the next phase, finding the secondary target markets, um, along with how to close your sales and your sales strategy, the financial breakdown, along with any optional appendices. It could be if you're in government contracting, your capability statements, your past performances, um, increasing your NACE codes. Um, like I said, we have or government certifications. So we have consultants that can assist you in all the different faucets of what small business entails that you're able to plug in everything in towards your business plan. And once again, the business plan, it is an, an everlasting living, breathing document as your business model will change from one year to the next. And as Jose, as a former banker, he he knows from businesses that were presenting him the business plan in 2019, here are my goals for the next three years. And look what happened in 2020. So those existing customers are no longer existing. They had to pivot, how to readjust the marketing strategies in the everlasting competitive marketplace. So Jose, as a business consultant in the realm of Maxis Capital, was able to provide some strategic uh, financial forensic analysis what is the best route to have a positive cash flow while the business is um, pivoting their, their well. Then with the funding request, this is where you're able to have and identify the exact amounts of funding you will need to start your business or have already invested to make sure that it ties specifically towards your financial projections. Don't pull numbers out of thin air, um, just have the checks and balances to make sure that everything is, is tied together. So if you're seeking a specific funding for a business, include those funding requirements towards your business plan. And how do you intend to use those funds that you receive? Is it for working capital, um, debt requirement um, acquisitions? Then the strategic financial situation plans will be if you're buying out someone, uh, debt repayments or selling your business. With the financial projections, this is where you're able to explain your revenue forecast, how much money you have and need, when and how those business um, expects to make profit, and also details what your marketing and operational processes and plans will cost, and following and providing the three financial statements, which is the projected balance sheet, the cash flow projections, and the PL projections. The good thing, um, everyone is receiving today's presentation, so you will definitely have some links in this presentation, um, but definitely Jose will be more than happy to work with you um, to make sure that everything is tip top shape um, for the respected lender to assist you um, um, to obtain the necessary funds that you're seeking. So the balance sheets, this is where it reports the company's assets, the liabilities, and any equity that takes place. Mm -hmm. With the cash flow projections, it's any money entering and leaving your business over any given time. It could be on a monthly basis. It could be at a um, quarterly basis, annual basis, 
and enables you to meet those existing financial obligations as well planned for the future. With the PL projections, this is where we look put um, your expenses into two different buckets, the fixed and the variable expenses. The fixed, it is a consistent amount. It could be the salaries, it could be the rent. What the variables, it could be your, your, your products or any salaries or commissions um, that you have in that regard. Then each entry of the p &L statement provides insight into the cash flow of the company and shows where the money is coming from and how it's being used. Jose, um, with you, um, in regards of the, the, the fixed and variable expenses in the p &Ls, um, what are some additional insights or tips you could provide with the participants and the small business owners um, so they could fully understand and, re and read their numbers on a, on a, on a, on a basis, a continuous basis? Well, I mean, obviously having a profit and loss um, projection, it gives you an idea of what you expect the business to make. Um, so it's important you have a good handle on what are your fixed expenses. Fixed, fixed expenses can be um, can be your rent, can be your salaries, um, can be your, you know, your cleaning and maintenance, your electricity. You know, those things are what, regardless of whether, you, whether you're selling a product or not, you've had a, a good month or a bad month, those expenses are coming in. So those are the expenses that you've got to have the, the you know the, the the whereabouts to be able to meet those expenses. Um, what are variable expenses? I mean, those can be if you're paying, if you're having a uh, you have sales salespeople and you and you there's a commission base, you're paying them on a commission. That that's a variable expense. Um, all of a sudden you get certain um, you get certain discounts and certain products you can buy out of the ordinary. Those are variable expenses because they're they're not they're not you're not having those expenses every month. Um, in the same fashion. So it's important to have, uh, obviously the fixed expenses are key because those you're gonna have no matter what. You know, it's like you own a, like you own a house. Um, it, you know, even if you don't go to work, you still have to pay FPL, you've gotta pay the mortgage or the rent, you gotta pay the water bill. Those are your fixed type expenses. The other ones, um, uh, for example, your eating expense, those are variable expenses. So the expenses that you don't have, a, a, that, that can change from month to month are the ones you need to have, um, Need to know as need to know as well and project. Um, you have the capital for those expenses if they come in. And remember, the, you're, you're sort of projecting what the expenses may be. The fix you may have a good handle on the variable. You need to kind of tackle and see what they can be. Um, but to make sure that obviously you, you at the end of the day you've got enough revenue um, coming in to cover all those expenses. So it's important to have to go through A through Z on any expense that, you, that business has. Um, nothing is too small because it, it adds up. Thirty dollars here, hundred dollars here. Um, at the end, at the end of the month, um, everything adds up. You need to make sure that you obviously you're, you're you're you know you're in the black at the end of the month. In the break-even analysis, is what Jose was talking about. It shows the sales threshold that needs to be uh, surpassed before the business becomes profitable, which is the break-even analysis. And then um, if you have any questions, I'll strongly encourage you to put them in the chat or in the Q&A so that I'll be more happy to ask those questions for you. Jose, I have a question for you. If starting a van expediting company and the person who will be driving for us is already driving as a contractor for another company who owns the van, can we use the income he is earning with the other company as income for a new business once started and registered, then when we ask for a loan, we could tell the lender that our current income is only off 20% of the profit and will increase 80% once our van is purchased. Okay, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a loaded question. Um, I, I guess the question is, if, if, if the income is coming to you, obviously it's an income you're gonna report. I mean, if he's driving, you know, you mentioned he's driving for somebody else and and and, and the van and he's going to drive for you now. If, if the income is coming to you and you're going to report, remember, you're going to pay taxes on it. So so make sure that obviously uh, that that's that that's correct. But any any income coming to you that and again, remember, remember they, they're going to ask for tax returns at the end of the day at some point in time or a business bank statement. So make, that, that income has to be reflected somewhere. If it's, if it's a recent startup, it's going to be reflected coming in um, during the last three months to your business bank statements. 
Um, if this has been around for a while. They want to see tax return to, to, to see that that business income is actually coming in. Um, obviously, the, depending on what that income shows and what the profits are, does that, that help you for a loan? Absolutely. Um, what, what's the second part of the question, Jesus? With the 80%? Yes. And then, um, then when we ask for a loan, we could tell the lender that our current income is only off 20% of the profit and we will increase to 80% once our van is purchased. Okay, that your sales are off. You're, you're talking about yeah. So twenty percent, and twenty percent is his current cut as a driver. Okay, you're talking, but you're talking that your sales, your sales, but why are your sales off? Your sales off from year to year. Your sales off because you're you're just the business is starting now and growing, and you don't you don't you don't have enough sales yet. Um, if that's the question, uh, don't focus so much on your sales being off. Um, on your sales being off. If you're, a, if you're a recent startup, what you've got to focus is that you can document the sales, uh, the revenues, and and the, and the bottom line profits to repay whatever loan you're looking for. Um, and if buying that van, let's, let's say you've got X sales and you've got X profits and you're making money. Um, and now you, you say you want to buy the van because that's going to help you, That in some fashion, that's going to help you uh, save money or generate more revenues. Um, then that's what you need to demonstrate. You know, and, and and sometimes maybe not in a business plan, but you need to have a good handle as to look, if, if we buy the van instead of paying the lease, now the van is ours. And how does that translate into more sales and at the end of the day more profits? You know, that that, that can be done, that makes sense. Um I wouldn't start with you know why your sales are off, but more more likely, you know, why do why buying this product or this van or what or, or doubling our van size or what have you, how that's gonna increase your sales and more profits. Um, and that's that's the focus that I would take. Um, I'm not I'm not sure I answered your question. It was it's kind of a yeah. And um and I, I put my email in the chat so like that if, if you want like a more personalized conversation, show me an email. I'll be more than happy to connect you with the next steps. Um, so you could schedule a meeting with Jose. Yeah. And um go more in depth of your business needs and financial needs most importantly. But but like I said, I'm strongly encourage you to follow us on our social media channels. But like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Um, that is why we have a plethora of recorded webinars to assist you, to give you those tools for you to be successful. But definitely, if you want to meet with a business consultant, um, visit our website at bizgap.miami as we have upcoming events, meet the consultants and how we can assist you. Once again, it's no cost for you. And it's a good opportunity for you uh, for us to assist you with your business needs. So I want to thank you, Jose, but I want to thank all the participants here um, that took um, some time of your day um, to participate in today's webinar. I want to thank you all for attending and I'll be looking forward to assisting you with any way we can. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Thank you, everyone.